Thank you for tuning in for another episode of The Verdict. Today, we will discuss three of our favorite documentaries. We'll be coming at you right after this. Welcome to The Verdict on this very special Valentine's Day, brought to, brought to you by yours truly, Terrence Valentine. I'm Kat McClung. I'm Bobby Horton. The, document I the documentary I chose today to talk about is Aileen, The Life and Death of a Serial Killer. Nick Broomfield produced this documentary in 2003 to get in the head of a famous serial killer, Aileen Wardles, who went, to a murder who went on a murder spree in 1989. Please enjoy this killer, Nick, production with Aileen. I never provoked those guys. It's very nice, very ladylike. I didn't even swear in front of my clients. I had no intentions of killing anyone. I'm not that type of person. I want to tell you something about her birth. I thought that she got some kind of brain damage. I defended myself, which everybody has the right to do. If I could do it all over again, I would have became an outstanding citizen of America. I sentence you to death for the murder of David Spears. I'll be up in heaven while y'all rotten in hell. Wife and kids get raped. My evil happened to come out because of circumstances. She's been failed by the legal system. Cops knew who I was. And they covered it up to turn me into a serial killer. They want to turn them into high-profile cases for books and movies. We're executing a person who's mad. I believe in the death penalty, and I have a duty to implement the law. <laughs> Eileen, life and death of a serial killer. Thanks a lot, Society, for Railroad Max. So, guys, is this documentary killer or not? <laughs> um, I, I didn't like it all that much i'm not gonna lie but i thought it was interesting like she's super insane obviously <laughs> she's having like she has so many issues and i felt like throughout the film i don't know i like it didn't mention a lot about the specific cases and i but like i liked that there were qu quite a few interviews with her they did a lot of background stuff but i just felt like there was so much lacking about like what happened right. like i don't I don't understand like what the cases were exactly. Yeah, with me, uh, Nick Broomfield, he has a lot of documentaries on Netflix and I really don't like most of them. <laughs> I don't like his narration because he kind of drags things on, but I can say he's good at what, he's, what he does because he gets a lot of information. So I think he just wanted to show like Eileen's perspective and get her, you know, what she thought about everything. And as you can see, they didn't give her the insanity plea, but you can tell that <laughs> she's crazy. See, yeah, you can tell she's crazy <laughs> because, like, she'll say something, and then she'll say something else that contradicts what she just said. But she's so, paranoid. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I agree all the way. Um, I like crazy documents <laughs> like this. Right. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, she is crazy, and it just the whole documentary just kind of threw me off. Just because it's just the fact about like what you said. She was, you know, at war with herself basically. Like she was saying that. Uh, I remember she was saying that. She didn't kill him, but then she told somebody else, yes, I killed him. And then <laughs> well, off camera, she was like, I didn't kill him. It was self-defense. And I was just like, um. It was definitely self-defense. It was definitely. <laughs> yeah. She, uh, no, like, it was crazy how personal he got with her. Like, mm -hmm. she kept saying throughout the film she didn't want to talk to anybody because they were all using her right. to basically get money. Mm -hmm. And then you had, like, you, you had this guy who was coming in, who was making a documentary, so you have to assume he's probably gonna make some money. But she's super willing to talk to him. Like, it was very impressive, I guess, in that stance. I was impressed with how close he was able to get to those cases. Even after the fact that you seen when they was in the courtroom, his documentary kind of played against her because they brought up stuff with uh, her lawyer. Yeah. You know, he was smoking in the car and he was <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> did the documentary for money. So they really didn't take him serious. So that kind of hurt him. So I was surprised that she still wanted to talk to him. Yeah, it hurt her because like what they said, obviously um, it kind of like chopped up and you can tell that one, he had a white shirt and then he <laughs> ended up changing shirt. And then dude was in the courtroom was like, uh, if I was on a trip, you know, I changed shirts too. Right. And it's just like, uh, you're I, guilty. Because so. the prosecutor was like, 
you know, don't you edit these clips? <laughs> so he was like, maybe you get it from this clip, from that clip, and you put it together. But, yeah. Well, he you know. definitely, I mean, there was a cut somewhere. Right. And like, you can't, you, he could defend it by being like, well, he wanted to look nicer, yeah. but then like, why? But at the end of it, he <laughs> said, you know, I still have all the footage, you can look at it if you want. So, I, it, yeah, was, it was he hard. was interesting. Then, I know just in the courtroom period, like, Eileen, she's just a character because she made this story. <laughs> like, I started to feel bad for her because she, she's like the man put rub and alcohol in her and yeah. you know, held her nose and put rub and alcohol in her nose. And I'm like, man, that's crazy. So I was like, she's a great hopefully actor. she gets off. But then she, <laughs> she's a great actor. I hope this right. insane exactly, person yeah. who killed like how many, like seven men in a seven year? Seven men in a year. In one year. It was, and, but the prop, my biggest issue with this was, is like, I thought it was funny that she brought up specifically the circumstance that like she was afraid people were going to try and make money off of her so she was only going to answer certain questions but then he was always in front of the camera mm -hmm. which i was like okay well like she i felt like she was being taken advantage of right. by the guy who's making the documentary because the second at the end when she gets lethal injection and there's all those press there yeah. all of a sudden he's in front of the cameras doing interviews and you're like Really? Are you are this very much is like biased? Like you're you're saying she's crazy, but then at the end you're like, but like did she deserve to die? And you're like, you do. That was something that was kind of crazy with me when you seen uh, him videotaping everything in the courtroom. It looked like he was the only one in there with a camera. Like you yeah. really didn't see too many press in the court cases. You just usually, like, you know, it seemed like that was a big case in Florida, so mm -hmm. you would think that. And when yeah, she have multiple you know, people finally, in there. Yeah. yeah. When she was finally at the end, it was plenty of cameras there then, so maybe everybody was just waiting on it. I mean, what kind of freaked me out about it, she <laughs> was talking like, you know, she wasn't, she was on the outside looking in like, yeah. yeah, if you don't, like she didn't say, if you don't stop me, I'm gonna stop killing. No, yeah. she's like, if you don't stop Eileen, you know, I mean, she's gonna, gonna keep kill killing. Yeah, yeah, and I'm crazy. just like, <laughs> Um, do you not know that's you? Like, yeah, it was crazy. I mean, I, the, the best thing about the film was how much information he was able yeah. to get, like how close he was able to get to her. Right. And even like when she was doing interviews and she was holding back, mm -hmm. she was not holding yeah, back. She was, no, there was no, no circumstance where she was. Speaking on all the information, let's kind of like maybe play devil's advocate a little bit. Do you feel sorry for her a little just because of her upbringing? No. Like, you know, she was, her mother <laughs> abandoned her at six months. Her father kicked her out. She had a baby at 13. And yeah, she lived in the woods in the wintertime. Slightly. Yeah, slightly. It's yeah, just. It's hard. But it's, was any of that true? Yeah, uh, you're right. That's what I said. She was any know, of that true? She confused, well, but the thing about it, though, he interviewed a couple yeah. of guys that, you know, she was actually living out in the woods yeah. with. And then her mom, she, uh, they actually interviewed her mom, but too. But her mom didn't, said she didn't know anything about it, didn't she? Mm -hmm. Not like, about this, her like, living in the woods. Yeah, yeah. she's like, her mom just like, Left and then only time you've seen it is like um funeral for her adopted right. parents, I funeral. believe. I had a hard time feeling sorry for her because specific they interviewed her mom and then when they went in to interview her, <sighs> she was so she was like cursing up a storm yeah. about like hating yeah. this woman and you were just like, I don't know what or who to believe mm -hmm. is really but you know she killed exactly. those people. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. She tried to say like one of them was like self defense. Yeah. And I was just like <laughs> Yeah, and that's, that's the thing too like she kept saying self-defense but then she started saying it off camera but i think towards the end she had been on death row for 12 years yeah so i think she was just tired of it and she was just ready to go ahead and meet her fate well she had several death sentences at that point yeah, it was yeah. crazy at the end i don't know if you guys noticed but she was kind of like talking like illuminati terms towards <laughs> the end yeah. and it kind of just had me like shivering because she was just like the government and <laughs> You know, yeah. the system is terrible, and like, you guys going to get it, and, and I'm just like, do well, you know something she, that we don't when know? When she found out that those uh, corrupted cops were trying to make a movie out of her, mm -hmm. then, you know, yeah. she had to do what she had to do. Um, well, all around, what, it, what do you guys think? Would you watch it again? Would you recommend it to other people? I definitely would. Yeah, of course, of course. I think if I would you, recommend it. Yeah, if you like crazy you know crazy <laughs> type of movies uh documentaries yeah like real heavy life. dose yeah. of like salt there mm -hmm. all right well next we're gonna go on to my doc documentary of choice uh which is hamilton's america lin-manuel miranda uh created this musical a uh, beautiful beautiful musical about history it caught the world by storm struck an interest in the revolutionary and then into the revolutionary character alexander hamilton and here is the trailer for hamilton's america 
is the story of someone who wrote his way out of his circumstances and then wrote his way to self-destruction. I thought, this is Tupac, this is Biggie, this is a hip hop story. This is my next show. The ten dollar founded father without a father got a lot. Alexander Hamilton is one of the unsung heroes of our country. He was a brilliant man and a daring man who had a vision. Hamilton had the core idea about an aggressive role for government that enriches us all. Well, the word got around, Mr. President. Hey, man. When you told us, I'm going to do a rap about Alexander Hamilton, we <laughs> said, well, good luck with that. <laughs> Hamilton has this incredible drive, this incredible inventiveness. He's so relentless. It forces you to reckon with, well, what am I doing with my life? So I'm writing as fast as I can. Right now, I'm working on the second song in the show. I haven't figured out how it works yet. It's rare that you do a show where you have so many places that you can visit. Can I touch the desk? No. No, OK, I won't. Hamilton's an interesting, self-destructive, lightning rod of a character. Hamilton had the first major sex scandal. This is like a soap opera. You can't make this stuff up. On hip-hop, no one can tell you you're wrong unless the rhymes are whack. <laughs> <laughs> Alexander Hamilton is somewhere going, I created what money is in the bank systems. I got no thanks for that. I feel like Hamilton reached out from history and wouldn't let me go until I told his story. What's your name? So we're back. Uh, what were your guys' thoughts on Hamilton's America? Well, <laughs> I see your face already. I'll go first. My first impression was, I don't think I'm gonna like this because <laughs> I'm not really into musicals like that, but Hamilton, I, I gotta admit, it's, it's pretty nice. So I actually liked it. it but the documentary itself, when I first seen it, I was like, is this the actual play? Cause I don't wanna watch it again. But then they start, you know, they start going like behind the scenes. Yeah. And start giving you the history and stuff. And I, I think it was a, a great documentary. I'm, I'm pro your opinion. Okay. <laughs> I have a feeling Bobby's opinion we're going to. Terrible. I just oh. didn't like it. No, I'm, I'm playing. <laughs> no, nah, but um, I enjoyed it to a certain extent. You know, I'm like I was saying, like what you were saying, I was kind of, you know, hoping that I wasn't re watching Hamilton. <laughs> but then, like, when it kind of got deep down into, like, you know, the music wise and it actually started sounding like you know some actual rap and then it had one of my favorite rappers Nas on there right. you know yes. I, I kind of start to enjoy it, but you know I'm not really a, a Hamilton fan so I'm sorry for the people you know <laughs> no disrespect so wait did you think it was going to be about like just the history of it yeah oh okay yeah. so then you were, you were, <laughs> you were like I'm yeah. about to get a history all lesson right. I was just like and then you were like wait why are mm, they rapping all of a sudden mm, yeah I mean the guy got creative yeah, never, never thought about I'm it. Saying, that's the great thing about Hamilton. I actually think they should implement that into the school system. Like, yeah, make it more You see fun. people all the time. They yeah. can. It's hard to sometimes remember schoolwork, but you can remember your favorite songs. So yeah, yeah. Once you make like your schoolwork into songs. Mm -hmm. It makes it easier for kids to remember. So I think that's a, a great idea. I think that's one of uh, one of the things that's cool is like in at least in New York City and some of the cities where they're now doing it because they're touring this yeah. musical now. Um, they do a thing called Eduham where they bring kids from schools into the theater and they get to meet all the actors and then they get to perform like they do projects based on that and it's really cool to see that grow from like just this musical that seemed really weird that came from Lin-Manuel Miranda's head like you sit there and he was like this is this is like rap yeah. and you're just like what exactly. <laughs> like, you don't see that at all and he did this interview where he was like if I didn't do it, someone else would have done it, and I was yeah. like, no, it wouldn't have <laughs> no, been like no that. No one else would have thought yeah. of this. But that's the great thing too. Uh, what's what's his name? Lin Manuel Miranda. Lin Manuel. Lin Manuel Miranda. Lin Manuel Miranda. Just gonna call <laughs> him. Yeah, I can actually like uh, the guy from the Roots. He said, you know, he was actually true because he said, you know, he grew up in the '90s, which is to him is the golden era of hip hop. So he wasn't somebody who just wanted to do it for money. You know, yeah. he actually was do it for the culture. It. Yeah, man. for the culture. So yeah. that was a nice thing. And it was just different. So it was interesting to see. Uh, my favorite part about the entirety of this um, documentary is like there's one message that kind of loops throughout, which is like the idea of legacy. So they talk about the legacy, the actual Alexander Hamilton left. Yeah. And then you're talking about the legacy of Lin Manuel Miranda creating like, 
this character, this right. this musical that's definitely historical. It's won the most Tonys out of any show. It's 17 Tony Awards. It's just new. It's like this new idea. And then you have legacy, like, personal. Like, it gets yeah. to, like, the heart of things as well. Exactly. Yeah. The actual Hamilton fans actually enjoyed it, too. So, yeah. you know, you know, some people, there's always that iffy type of crowd that, you know, one that's, you know, I like the classic Hamilton, no music, you know, just <laughs> straightforward. Then there's one, you know, to jazz it up a little bit, put a little style to it, you know. I, I feel like a lot of people both like both of them. I mean, I like yeah. both of them, but I mean, it's rap. I think it, it's interesting because it brings two different cultures together. Yeah, yeah. Like you have like this, this, these very traditional people who know a lot about history coming to see a show that's rapping that you probably are like, okay, if they're into history, you think of like a geeky white yeah. dude, like, and you just don't think of that. And then when you you have these rap fans that are coming in and seeing, like Quest was saying in yeah, the musical exactly. where he was like, I had to watch it, which by the way, the fact that he got Hamilton tickets nine times is yeah. insane to begin with. But like, he, he had to go see it so many times because there were so many Different layers to yeah, it. Yeah. And I was just like, they're bringing in, like they're making, this makes everyone passionate. Which is, or it gets a reaction yeah. at the very least. Yeah, and he had the greatest tryout ever. You know, yeah. the first time trying it out was at the White House. <laughs> at In the front White of House. Obama. That's why I was sitting here like, the weirdest what? crowd you can do that <laughs> for. So. Okay. I got a sweet 16 yeah. bars about yeah. Alexander Hamilton. Yeah, exactly. Hey, it not was too many crazy. people can have that. It's <laughs> like everybody. <laughs> and another thing, too, I liked how they actually got into the zone. Like, they were going to uh, mm -hmm. Alexander Hamilton's house. They went to, was it Jefferson? Mm -hmm. I think they also went to Washington's Washington, quarters. Yeah, so inspired him too. Yeah, so when you do that and you're yeah. actually in the zone, he said he actually made like a keyboard on his yeah. laptop. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. I think it's one of my other favorite aspects of this is um, they talk about the complexity of character, especially with Aaron yeah. Burr. Mm -hmm. And a villain isn't just a villain and a hero isn't just a hero. Like Hamilton did a lot of things that is shown in this documentary where it was like, he wasn't a perfect person at all. He actually had an affair and like, he was like, oh, I'm like fine right. politically. It's just yeah, like my personal that life funny. that's messed that up. And then Aaron Burr like personally seemed okay. Like he yeah. had a lot of love for this woman and mm -hmm. all this other stuff, but like politically he was shady. Yeah. And so it, I liked that they refused to simplify these characters. Mm -hmm. Like they let them be really like complex humans instead of just reducing them down to like a two-dimensional character. Another funny yeah. part was when they were reading the letters and it was kind of like <laughs> conflict. They was like, this is so long. Like who will write a letter this long? Right. And Alexander Hamilton did that like six hour speech in front of uh, like proposing this new, like right. he's known for that. But what was funny is when they were doing the guns yeah. and the duel, it was like, there's so much time to apologize. Yeah. But that's what made the show ultimately. So mm -hmm. what do you guys think? What do you think? Would I, would, you I, would, it? I would recommend it because, again, like people would probably think they wouldn't like it, but once you actually get into it, then you'll see, like, yeah, I can do this. I can watch it. I definitely, I would recommend it just because I, d I just think it's aspirational and I think it's inspiring to see this kind of innovation. Um, personally, I. It, Come on, Bobby. I really wouldn't. I mean, if you're more into like the R&B type, like you want to actually go in the history and hear something different, that's perfectly fine. So I wouldn't personally. <laughs> All right. Okay. Finally, we are onto my documentary, Richard Pryor Icon. Richard Pryor is one of the most overlooked comedians ever. In this documentary, we will look at the life of Richard Pryor, the legacy he left, his banning by television networks, and how we impact the society and media today. Here is a very rare, clean comedy routine by Richard Pryor on the Ed Sullivan Show. When I get self-conscious, there's a voice in the back of my head says, How's your breath? <laughs> you know, right? I get crazy, you know. Because uh, there's nothing worse than walking up to a lady saying, Hi! <laughs> and she says, No. <laughs> you know, and, and then right away you want to do something, you try to check yourselves out. You can tell when guys are worried. You ever see a guy, Hi, Fred, how you doing? <laughs> and, and guys try to be cool when they go, you know, you ever see guys this, you know, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> you know, right, and you try to get a drink. You, 
go over and get a little snops, because that straightens you out, right? Guys have snops. Thank you, little snops. Thank you, my dear. <laughs> and they're very cool. I try it. You know, little snops, please. Yeah. Thank you very much, my dear. You know, spill it all over my suit. You know. <laughs> Makes your clothes smell good. Smell, smell, it's good, you know, right? And you get nervous. I get nervous when I see women. You ever try, like this, you ever try to light a lady's cigarette clear across the room and you can't find your matches? You see her? <laughs> you know how weird that looks to somebody across the room? Think, who's the strange kid over there filling his body? <laughs> Right, and you get really excited, right? And you find the matches. I found them! I found the matches! Right, and you run over there and you strike it and the whole book lights up. <laughs> or some guys are really cool though. You ever see the cool guys? Guys really cool. They bend the match down very European. You ever see them do this one hand and you strike the match and your thumb lights up? <laughs> right, or sometimes you go, allow me, my dear. <laughs> no, all right. All right, right, you really want to be cool with a cigarette because ladies are impressed by guys that smoke cigarettes for some weird reason. And you can really impress them like you see them and you lay those eyes on them, you know. What did y'all think about this documentary? I'm gonna let you go first. Yeah, I loved it. I'm not gonna lie to you. I loved it because it represents so many comedians that didn't follow this footsteps. That's it's wonderful. It's just wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. I thought it was it was so good, especially because, like I said, I'd mm -hmm. seen some of his comedy before, and I could tell like he was he laid everything out yeah. on the table, and so I didn't actually know what was true and what wasn't, or the fact that a lot of it was very true. And I didn't have background. So like the fact that he came up and was doing what they considered white bread comedy, like this mm -hmm. clean, fun, squeaky, like whatever Ooh, comedy. Not him at all. No, because that the Richard Pryor I had seen was exactly. very controversial. Exactly. And <laughs> so it was like colorful vocabulary. D um, to say the least. We yeah. That clip was one of the only ones we could find. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the best thing about this documentary is that we learned so much about him because we really didn't grow up on him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think he, he died, say, 2005, so uh, just his upbringing and what he had to go through, yeah. where he was from. He's from Peoria, grew up in a prost prostitution house. His mother was a prostitute. Yep. Just having to grow up and seeing that and still wanting to be a star. You know, That's th hard. Exactly. Yeah, like... They said uh, a lot of comedians go through a lot of things that we don't know. Like, they yeah. do it to make us laugh, mm -hmm. but we don't know. Like, they do it because they, like, witness and pain and witness stuff that, you know. You have to be vulnerable to do it. Like, yeah. to me, mm -hmm. like, that would be hard to go through that kind of, pro like, exactly. that kind of upbringing and then get on stage and be like, I'm going to make you laugh about that for mm -hmm. an hour or whatever mm -hmm. time you have. And sometimes that can be the case, like, whatever you're passionate about with him is like when he was on stage he was okay he was normal but once he got off stage it was back to whatever he was Ooh. doing as far as the drugs and everything that he, he came up with and he had to think about and uh, well it's funny because he goes through you see him go through from like growing up in the prostitution house and right. then you see him going to do drugs and then he blows himself up and I'm sorry, it's not funny, but... Comes back from it. I know, you kind of yeah. want... You're just like, how? Yeah. They but say then, it was the greatest comeback ever. But then he passes comedian. away from MS, yeah, yeah. which, like, this story itself is crazy, but there's something about the documentary that I didn't particularly like was it felt a little clinical to mm -hmm. me, like, the, the interviews themselves, and it, it looks professional, but I wanted the mm -hmm. nostalgia that you can get because it's such an emotional mm -hmm. story. And I think maybe they were doing that because it's more covering the icon mm -hmm. and we already knew so much about it, but mm -hmm. I wanted 
the emotion to yeah. show that like, like tears crying did you not necessarily it? tears but just like the last there's this last clip that he does and it's mm -hmm. close yeah. to when i think he's gonna pass away he, had, he was mm -hmm. very like emaciated mm -hmm. and he it was it, that made me feel a lot and the rest yeah. of it i was like i feel something but it's like not like strong emotions okay and i believe he was saying that his main he wanted to be remembered yeah. for bringing joy to other people. Yeah. So don't cry, in other yeah. words. But yeah. I wanted to cry. Right. I wanted to be like, man, like, but of joy. Like, mm -hmm. the, he made it very far. He was very, ended up being very successful. But at the same time, man, he lived a tormented yeah. life. Yeah. And of course, that's the best thing about Richard Price. Like, even with the MS and he was in a wheelchair, he was still He's doing his stand up. Working. So he was just a strong yeah, guy. Just tell him, you know, wheel me up to the stadium. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, I'm I'm sitting here, I'm from the top. I mean, he. And in movies. Yeah. He's, he's full on doing He's an incredible man. Like, people, a lot of people don't give him as much credit. Like, in the world today, you don't hear people talk about him much. Right. You hear people talking about the Kevin Hart's and, you know, Cat Williams. Yep. And, you know, Dave Chappelle, but the thing about it, they all got their style from him. Exactly. So it's just like, I didn't know personally that he was famous for Bill Cosby impersonation. Yeah. I mm -hmm. didn't know that. Like, you know, I grew up on him. My father's, you know, very more into it. Exactly. And like, Sanford and Son, I didn't know he wrote Sanford and Son. And I grew up watching that. And I, you know, I loved it. And the most important thing, without Richard Pryor, TV would be a lot different. Yeah. Because the reason we have the five second delay for television is because of Richard Pryor. Yeah. yeah. He was going on Saturday Night Live and they knew he was very controversial. <laughs> so they were like, what can we do <laughs> yeah. to have a backup yeah. plan? They came up with the five second delay. So That's literally why. I mean, he changed. And that's something that I thought was really interesting was that the exact comment was, you don't meet someone often who literally changes the way live television works. Mm -hmm. Like they changed it for him. And then exactly. that became a standard. And it shows even a lot how powerful he was because he was successful at that comedy that he started out with, yeah. like this physical comedy that was goofy. Mm -hmm. But he walked away from yeah. it and he was like well established. He was on talk shows. And it's not many people would be willing to be like, I'm just going to walk away from this career because this isn't me. And one guy, when they interviewed him, he even said, you know, he thought his career was over when he walked off. Yeah. But he said it was really his career had just begun. So. It was starting. Yeah. Like it was. You and did they say that he was just like? Uh, sorry for interrupting. Oh, did you're they? Just, did they just say like he was in the middle of a show and he kind of just stopped and just looked out into the audience and yeah. just froze yeah. up and he just like connected us like this is not me. Yeah. This is something that you know I don't want to be no. I want my own image. I don't want to be known as the Bill Cosby uh, impersonation. Like he I want to be. Off. Yeah. So I mean that takes a lot of courage, you know. Yeah. Especially in front of an audience, you just walk off. And, you know, they, the producers was like, get back out there. What are you doing? <laughs> he was like, I'm not going back out there. So um, I respect him a lot for that. Yeah. Not yeah. too many people actually have the strength to do that. You, you go oh, ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say, I have a lot of respect for him as an icon. I, I, I wish there had been a little bit more because they're interviewing all these crazy cool people, mm -hmm. like people who were close with him in comedy and like mm -hmm. understood the torment because essentially all of them go through, put themselves right. through a lot to get where they are. And I was like, man, none of y'all are crying about this. Like, I know he didn't want you to, but like I would right. be because that's like, he's like, he was, he was an icon. It's yeah. just crazy to me. It's pretty sad. Like you said, there's so many people that he just inspired and a lot of comedians probably wouldn't be themselves without Richard Pryor because now they can go on stage and say anybody. And these days anyways, like, you know, uh, they talk about politics. Mm -hmm. And that was the thing with Richard Pryor. Is like he came up with, uh, it was the end of the Vietnam War. Yep. It was the Black Panther Party that just started. So that's why he had to change. Well, I definitely, I would recommend this because I do, do think it gives you a good idea. I just, I, I don't know that I'd watch it a second time, if that makes sense. I would recommend it like to anybody, you know, just go watch it, man. Yeah. And you'll learn a lot. I would recommend it because you have to know who was before you, so. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Definitely a good idea. All right. Well, looks like we're heading out. Uh, you can join us next week for the verdict. Have a good day. <laughs>